Hello and welcome again. We're glad that you're here. Uh, by the way, on these videos, I want to tell you when you finish 10 of them, okay, we have a gift for you. All right. We have a gift for you. Uh, if you're local and you're going to our church, let me know and say, hey, pastor, I've finished 10 of these. Um, we'll have a uh, certificate for you and a gift, maybe a book or a Bible or a music CD or uh, something like that. If you're going to another church, go tell that pastor, hey, I just finished 10 of those lessons. He said, you're going to give me a gift. Okay. <laughs> if you won't, let me know and we'll help you. But uh, we want to reward you for going through these things, and I know they'll be a help to you, okay? All right, so the lesson that we're going to have for now is the most important lesson that you need to know, okay? Again, I will probably say that every time. This one's really true. If I only could teach one lesson, if you only had time to listen to one, it would be this one. How come? Because the Bible says after someone gets saved and baptized, then they're supposed to be taught all things, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And so this lesson we're going to talk about now is on the church. Where are you going to learn all things that you need to know? You're going to learn them at church. And so this lesson is so important because this is where you're going to help to learn a lot of what God is going to give you in the church. So I want to tell you how important this is and to help. First is to let you know what it's not. Okay, Church, number one, it does not save you. It does not take you to heaven. A uh, lady one day, I met her out visiting, and she said, I heard that you believe that if they don't go to your church, they can't go to heaven. <laughs> I just smiled and said, ma'am, I don't know where you heard that. So listen carefully. I believe you can never go to church a day in your life and still go to heaven. Really? It's not about church. It's about you accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you're on this, then we believe that you have. Uh, uh, that's how you found the website, ijustgotsaved.com. And so once you trust Christ as your Savior, like we talked about last lesson, nothing can change that. Nothing can take that away from you. So does that mean we shouldn't go to church? Absolutely not. We should go to church. There's so many things that you need to do um, that you'll get and learn from being in church, but it is not to save you. Okay. Number two, you do not go to church to worship God. This is a misnomer in so many churches. Um, if you go to church to worship God, then you can only worship God when you're in church. Oh, I got to wait till Sunday so I can go worship God. No, we're to worship God every day. The Bible says we're to worship him in his beauty and his holiness. Be still and know that I am God. We're to get alone with God every day and to worship him, to praise him, to pray to him, to talk to him. We'll talk more about that later on. But this is not just to go and to worship God, okay? Um, there are not worship services in the Bible except pagan. Um, that's not what church is for. Um, you're going in obedience to God, but it is not to worship God. Number three, it is not just for fun and entertainment. Now, you'll see by these videos, I like to enjoy life. I like to have fun. Um, I laugh and tease and joke all the time. And church is fun. There's nothing wrong with laughing in church. But it is not for an entertainment to go to be entertained, all right? It's not for a concert. It's not for uh, entertainment. What is it, okay? The church is um, for for a couple big things. Number one, uh, it is for you to learn and to grow, to learn and to grow. Now, we started off by talking about how important it is as a Christian for you to grow, okay? Um, to grow in grace and grow in knowledge. So the church is to help you to do that. And so how does it help you? The Bible says God as a gift gives us pastors and teachers for the edifying of the saints, for the work of the ministry. And so God gives us pastors and teachers to help, to edify, to build, to grow the person who got saved. And so you will grow at church, it will help you to be able to do that. And so the purpose of church is to grow um, and then to also have fellowship. Fellowship is a big deal. The Bible says the early church, uh, um, that they continued um, in fellowship, okay, in the breaking of bread and of prayers. Um, they would come to church in fellowship. Other Christians learning, growing, fellowshipping, we are made to be a relational person. We have friends. We make friends. We like friends. Um, we communicate. We talk. Our friends ought to be Christian, going the same direction, doing the same things that we're doing. If all of your friends are drinking and smoking and cursing and doing drugs and you hang around them all the time, then what's going to happen? 
and you'll be doing the same things, okay? You ought to have new friends and good friends that are serving the Lord, that are doing the things that God wants them to do. That's what you need. So the fellowship is a big deal with that. Come early, stay late, hang around, invite somebody over, take them out to eat, uh, or go up to the pastor and say, hey, uh, can you take me out to eat, <laughs> okay? Um, do that? Yes, do that. You come to our church, say, pastor, when are you going to take me out to eat? Um, if you're a man, I'll take you out. If you're a lady, my wife and I will take you out. So um, you ought to have that fellowship. That's important. The breaking of bread, sitting down with a meal with someone and communing and fellowship. And that's important. Those are the things the church is for, to learn, to grow, and for fellowship. Okay. Now, how important is the church? I want you to look at this graphic that we're going to put up. And just to show you how important it is, we already said church doesn't save you, but is church important? Absolutely. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 3.15, the Bible says um, that, but if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. So the house of God is the church. Then it says the pillar and ground of the truth. The Bible says that the church is the pillar and and ground of the truth. Now, who's the truth? The truth is Jesus Christ. Look at that picture in front of you, the foundation, the truth, Jesus Christ. He's a cornerstone, the chief cornerstone. He's the foundation, um, and so that is Jesus. Now, the Bible says the church is the pillar and ground of the truth. Now, imagine that, that, that uh, foundation sets upon the ground. What would happen if you didn't have the ground underneath the foundation? the building would fall. What would happen if you didn't have the pillars? The roof would fall, okay? The Bible says the church is the pillar and ground of the truth. Without the church, Jesus falls. Without the church, um, everything falls. And so the Bible says Jesus shed his blood for the church. The church does not save you, but the church is the important thing that you need after you're saved to be able to grow, to learn, to fellowship, to be what you are supposed to be. Someone says, I can worship God anywhere. You can. But that's not the purpose of church, okay? Um, you cannot support missionaries anywhere. You cannot just break bread. Well, where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst. Of course, two or three people get together and pray. Jesus is there. Um, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. But that's still not the church, okay? And so um, the church is important. It does not save you, but it is the pillar and ground of the truth. I guarantee you, if you do not get in a good church and stay and grow, you will not be what God wants you to be. You'll not arrive being and doing what God's purpose was when he saved you. When God saved you, he had a purpose for you. He had a plan for you. I don't know what it is, but God does. And you will find out when you start growing and being what God wants you to be. Okay? Um, I, I, I hesitate and, and I stutter because... I don't want to be too strong, but I could not be too strong on this point. You must, as a Christian, get in a church and be able to grow. If not, you will not. You will not become what God wants you to be. Well, I'm just not used to that. I didn't grow up with that. That's okay. You need to start. Okay? You need to start. Um, I started these lessons with, okay, we need to grow, but then eternal security. You can't lose your salvation. That's the uh, preeminent doctrine that you need to know. This is a preeminent thing that you need to do. Now, lastly, what church? Okay? What church to go to? Um, for some of you, it's very simple. If you're in the town where somebody showed you how to go to heaven, then very simple. You go to that church. Okay, well, how do you know I should go to that church? Because they cared about you enough to share with you how you could know for sure you're on your way to heaven. All right? And uh, so that is the church you're supposed to go to. Who else did that? Who else cared about that? Um, here's the illustration. If you were sick and you went to a doctor, and the doctor gave you medicine, you didn't get better. You went back to the doctor. He gave you medicine. You didn't get better. You went to this doctor for weeks and months and years, and you never got better. What doctor would you go to from now on? the doctor that made you better, of course. Which is more important, your physical health for 60, 70, 80 years, or your spiritual health for all of eternity? 
You know what I'm getting at? People go to those same churches that did not show them how to go to heaven. They still go to the same church that they went to for years. Um, No one would go to that doctor that didn't help them, but for some reason we go to the same church that did not show us how to go to heaven, okay? Well, I grew up there, or my mom goes there, my friend goes there, or my grandpa's buried in the back there. Those are not reasons to go to a church. You go to the church that showed you how to go to heaven. You go to the doctor that helped you. Make sense? Okay, so that's simple. If you're in the town where the person showed you how to go to heaven, then you just go to that church. That is the will of God. How do you know it is? Because they showed you how to go to heaven. Think about this. If you had not trusted Jesus to save you, to take you to heaven, when that person talked with you and you died now, where would you have to be? According to the Bible, that would be hell. That makes that day the most important day of your life, the most important decision that you ever made. And the person who cared enough to show you how to go to heaven the most important person in your life at that time to help you with eternity, okay? So if you got saved someplace, you live in another city, then it's a little bit harder for you. Um, and so um, let me give you a few pointers. And again, I could I could spend a long time on all these. I don't want to because I want to make them quick. I don't want you to... Um, to look uh, dread, oh, how long is this going to be? I want you to be excited and look forward to it and even want to go back and listen to it again. How come? Because I talk so fast. So, um, so here's what to look for. Number one, make sure they believe salvation by grace through faith, not works. Make sure they're not trying to say you have to attend church to be saved or be baptized to be saved or live a certain life to be saved. We're saved by grace through faith. Make sure they know that. Number two, go to church that, the first lesson, where you can't lose your salvation. If you want to ask, uh, hey, is there anything at all that I could do that could cause me to lose my salvation? If they say yes, keep looking. That's not the church God wants you to go to. Next, look for a church that cares about people. Um, The Bible says that pure religion and undefiled before God is to visit the fatherless and the widows in their infliction, and to keep themselves unspotted from the world, okay? Three things very good to look for in a church. Do they visit the widows? Do they have a ministry to help people that are older who can't help them, but we can help them? We can help the widows. Number two, do they visit the fatherless? Do they have a ministry to reach out to children and poor children and kids that their dads are in jail or um, that don't have dads? Do they have a bus ministry to pick up boys and girls and bring them to Sunday school and church and teach them about Jesus? Look for a church like that. Um, And then to keep themselves unspotted from the world. Look for a church that doesn't seem like the world, that doesn't look like the world. If you go into a church and it feels like a nightclub, that's not where you're supposed to be. God says we're to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. We're not supposed to look like the world and act like the world and talk like the world just to be able to reach the world. We're supposed to be different than the world and separate from the world. Now, uh, there's a lot of different uh, things I could teach on what to look for in a church and not enough time. But let me tell you what my dad did. My dad grew up in church, moral, didn't drink, smoke, or cuss, joined the military. Uh, A lot of guys went drinking. He and one guy did not. Uh, One day that friend asked him, um, my dad's name is Cecil. Cecil, when did you get saved? When did you know you're on your way to heaven? And my dad said, what do you mean? I've always believed in God. I've always gone to church. Cecil, you don't know for sure. You've been saved and born again. And that friend um, showed my dad how he could know for sure that he was on his way to heaven. By the way, that friend is who I'm named after. His name was David Clock. He lives in Riverside, California. Um, and so I'm named after him. Uh, my dad then realized, wow, this is so important. I need to find out what the Bible says and find a church that lines up with the Bible. My dad is very uh, uh, distinct and deliberate and a good mind and a good study. And so he studied the Bible, read, 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 read. And then he said, I'm going to find a church that lines up with the Bible. What a novel idea. So he went to all these different type churches, went through their new members or their catechism or their confirmation classes and said, no, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. Um, And he ended up in a independent Baptist church, okay? Now, I'm not telling you to look for that. I think that's good. Uh, But what a great thing to find a church that lines up with the Bible. What does the Bible say? And to do that, okay? Uh, Visit, watch, look, ask questions um, if you're in another state looking for a church. Now, the other thing, we'd be glad to help you. If you want to email me, uh, Pastor D, as in David, Pastor D Baker at gmail.com. Give me your name, your, your city, um, and then we'll uh, we'll do our best to try to find you a good church in that area to try and to go to, okay? So important, does church save you, yes or no? 
No. What saves you? Jesus. Okay. Is church important? Absolutely. How important? I believe the most important thing you can do after you get saved to get in a good church. Now, how often should you be in church? Here's a phrase, when the doors are open, okay? It's an old-fashioned phrase meaning, hey, if they're having church, I'm going to be there. Hebrews says not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. What does that mean? When the church is assembling, then you need to be there. Don't forsake that, okay? Oh, I just come on Sunday morning once a week. Um, wait, is the church assembling on Sunday night? Then don't forsake that. Is the church assembling on Wednesday night? Then don't forsake that, okay? Not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but so much the more as you see the day approaching. Is, are we getting to the end of this world? Is it close to Jesus coming back? The Bible says we should be in church more, learning more, growing more, um, the closer we get to Jesus coming back. And I guarantee you, you will be glad that you did. Um, at our church, every service is geared for something different. The Bible says it's a pastor, I am to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, okay? There's so many things that we have to do and you can't do that in one service. So we have a Sunday school class. It's geared for your age, where you're at, what you're going through, okay? And your children. We have a Sunday morning service that most of the time is preaching to people's individual needs. Sunday night, many times is to group needs, group as a family, group as a, a church, um, the group needs. And then Wednesday night is a Bible study, teaching the Bible. We need to have all of those things in our life to be balanced. How many meals do you have uh, a day? Uh, three. We want a balanced meal, a balanced diet. I guarantee you, you need as much church as you can. Don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together, okay? I know I went a little longer than uh, the normal ones, but this is so important. Uh, so get it, get in church, be involved, and um, don't miss, don't miss. God bless you. Take care.